Hi guys, hope you're all well. I just want to say straight away that this is not an instructional video. Uh, not so long ago I posted this photo on Facebook and uh, it kind of stirred up a hornet's nest. So I thought uh, I'd do a video about it. The photo is posted and basically said mulching today. And uh, a lot of people say it looks very unprofessional. Some people said, why would you chip and mulch? Well, here's the reason why. One of the biggest issues we have as gardeners is trying to get rid of all the waste. Uh, when I was on the push bike I had a very very limited means of getting rid of waste so a lot of it just used to go into the green bins. Um, once I'd cleared up all the waste, if I was on a grassy area I'd just mow over it and it's just occurred to me why don't I just why don't I just pick it all up like this? Most of it is just very fine chippings, hedge trimming and what have you, so that's how this started. I would just use my mower and uh, shred it, chip it, whatever you want to call it, with the mower. It just seemed the best way of uh, clearing up all the waste. So typically it would be a hedge like I'm doing here. It would be just uh, small hedge clippings that I'd be uh, going over with the mower. And when I first started doing this, I used to just collect it with the mower. I didn't uh, mulch it or anything, I just used to collect it all. Uh, it's not something I would recommend, it can damage a mower, um, it can also stain the ground, it can uh, ruin the grass if you do this on grass, it, it really is just something that you have to choose to do yourself, it's, as I say it's not something I would recommend at all, uh, but it does work for me and it's worked for a long time. There are things you have to consider when doing anything like this, as you can see I'm picking up stones off the grass. If you're going to mow over grass you have to check for things like this anyway, but um, mulching you generally, or I generally, uh, lower the mower quite considerably. Um, on this particular lawn it didn't matter, on this one again it didn't really matter, uh, the lawn isn't perfect, I would not do this on a uh, perfect lawn or a really really good lawn and uh, the customer is always aware that there might be some staining, there might be some uh, damage uh, short-term damage to the grass um, they are aware of what will happen when a mulch like this so um, it, it there are things you need to consider as you can see it's not that bad it does tend to brown a bit but after a week or so by the time I've come back to mow this lawn it's back to normal so here I'm using the Honda HRX 537 it's set to mulch mode so it's not actually collecting at the moment all it's doing is breaking up all the uh, the branches and what have you. Again, you have to be careful not to where you do this because branches and small clippings can go flying off in all, all directions, so you have to be careful how you do this. It can also stain the concrete if you're not careful. So what I used to do was, um, if there was any thicker branches, I'd chip it in the chipper and bag it, let it rot down, as you can see here and go over it with the mower but it would just to mulch it down um, it's pretty much rotten anyway but it was so time consuming I'd have sort of like 30-40 bags to do and it could easily take a day and I thought you know what for the amount of uh, time it would take to do one job as opposed to several jobs I may as well do it on site so on this particular job here, this is where I started mulching. Uh, again, I'm being careful, making sure there's no one around, uh, making sure there's no parked cars, anything like that. As you can see, it does mark the pavement a bit, but it isn't as bad as it sounds. So once all my waste is mulched, it will go on a compost heap. I've got uh, three compost heaps, uh, three compost bins, and a soil heap. The soil is basically um, any sort of weeds, any weeding jobs that I've done. Uh, the bags will contain stones, soil, weeds, and I just put it on the soil heap, rotate it every now and again, and then sieve it, and then it goes onto another heap, which would mean that it's basically top soil. Um, but as you can see on this one, uh, it went once sieved, it really does become really good compost. Why waste it? Why, why give it to landfill? Or give it to someone else when you can utilize it yourself. 
So this is my rough compost heap. This is where all the shredding shreddings would go, where you can see some long shreds there. Uh, I'd add grass to it, leaves, anything really that can compost down. I wouldn't call it a compost heap, it's more of a mulch heap, composted mulch. As you can see I've got a large sieve there which uh, separates all the larger chunks. I'll get into that in a minute. So a lot of this is to do by hand with a hand sieve and it would take forever. So uh, on my trip to the black country I saw a sieve like this and I thought what a great idea and I built one as you can see and it works fantastic. This is just something I knocked together in about 20 minutes. This is probably the best sieve um, I've tried. I have tried a rotary sieve that didn't work very well at all. I think it was a Clark. Uh, I think there's many, many different uh, sort of um, named brand. Well, they're not named brands. They're just sort of like um, the same sort of generic thing, just with their own brand name on. Uh, what else? The hand sieve that you just shake with your hand. Uh, various sizes, various uh, filters on there. Like, it's just so time-consuming. I did consider it an electric drum, but again, as you can see, they get clogged. You get a lot of. Uh, larger debris that will just clog it very quickly I found this this is probably the best way of filtering uh, the, um, the compost heap it really doesn't take long to uh, diminish or filter a an average size compost heap so I've got three three heaps so this is my rubber rough one as I said and uh, in a minute you'll see the results so these are the results as I say I don't call it compost it's more a composted mulch and it's ideal to put on top of beds if I mulch on the job it'll get put into bags like this and left for a few months and as you can see this hasn't been uh, put on a compost heap or anything it's just been mulched on site and I've just left it in the bags this will go onto a compost heap eventually. You'll see in a second where um, I haven't chipped or mulched the waste, and that particular bag will be a tiny, tiny fraction of what I can fit into a normal mulch bag. This is a bed that uh, I've been struggling with recently. It's full of clay. Uh, very difficult. The rotavator just bounces over the top, and what I do is I take one or two bags with me, put it on top, and let it break down. You can see it's not so bad now. Um, here, you can see I have uh, put mulch on this particular bed. I've probably put about 12 bags so far, and uh, you can see it's just like concrete. Nothing really grows in here. Um, they yeah, have got a few shrubs, not many. So it's just a case of attacking it with a mattock and then um, chucking as many bags of mulch on as, as possible. I generally don't charge for the mulch. Um, I wouldn't actually dig the mulch into the border normally, but this is so bad, it is the only way I can dig it over. So basically as you can see I'm just using a mattock just to break up the clay, soil, whatever you want to call it and uh, I'm adding bags and bags and bags of uh, the mulch and then I just rake it over and rotivate it in with a little tiller attachment for the combi system. The combi I'm using is a 131R with the tiller attachment and it works wonders on beds like this. It really breaks up the soil, makes it easier to dig over next time. If I didn't do this on a job like this, it would be just an absolute nightmare throughout the whole year. So for me, mulching, composting and uh, putting it back on the beds just makes my job so much easier. I'm 
I'm not saying this fixes the problem of poor soil, but what it does, it helps, and it will take a long, 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 long time for the soil to become anything decent. Um, but as I said, on a weeding job like this, I could I have a choice. I can either mulch the beds like I'm doing here, or I can leave them and just constantly be fighting a battle against clay. This particular border, I've probably uh, put about 12 bags of mulch on here so far. Um, I think on this particular visit, I put about three bags. Uh, I try and on these type of borders where it's just full of clay, I try and put as much on as possible. But obviously, I've got to think of time, and uh, I don't generally charge for this. Um, but as you can see, uh, from just doing this, makes a massive difference. On this particular border I'm just scraping the top and just taking the tops of the weeds off. There's not really a lot I can do here because of the roots of the trees. And then I shall just place the mulch on top. It, it just um, makes it look really tidy. Generally I just take about one or two bags with me uh, per visit to the uh, to each garden. I just think it finishes off the job, it just makes it look really tidy. I did this border probably about two or three weeks ago and as you can see it's rotting down really well because it, it obviously continues rotting down I only placed it on top and here I'm just uh, I'm just scraping the top just to get rid of all the weeds it does kind of suppress the weeds it's not a weed suppressant but it does help prevent new weeds from growing um, so it's just a case of getting my little mini rake over it and uh, being careful not to stick out any of the bulbs and uh, once I've finished it'll look like I've just mulched it again and it'll look nice and tidy This isn't a great illustration of waste, but what you see here would probably go in maybe uh, not including the uh, the logs, but it'll probably go in about four, maybe five rubble bags if I mulch it down. Now the choice would be something like that. I'd have to do two trips to the tip, 
So straight off the bat, you're looking at £150 for me to pay. Uh, that's not my time, that's what I have to pay to tip it, if that's two van loads. Um, then obviously my time on top, and let's just say a couple of hours. Um, and the truth is, a customer wouldn't pay that, so it would be easier to chip it. Once chipped, you're probably looking at about 12, maybe 15 bags of rubble bags of uh, chippings. If I mulch it down, it could halve it because it really compresses down very, very well. And yes, it does take a little bit of extra time, but what you have to consider is which is the cheapest on the customer. Is it my time or is it get my time and going to the tip? And I have to say it would be my time and not my time and going to the tip. And this is the reason why I chip and mulch if I can. Uh, on jobs like this obviously, this is at uh, the rail depot, but on jobs if I do have logs and stuff, the logs will get logged on, on site and put into bubble bags. Uh, ready to be taken off or the customer can have them if they want them also um, it, the customer can also request the chippings just be put on their borders straight away so it's a win-win all the way round but it is the most cost effective way of disposing of the waste in my opinion thank you for watching <laughs>